check this out. Dead whale. Wow, you know I gotta go check that out. Here we go. utilize my time. I'm going to read some emails while I wait for this tide to change or a fish to hit or whatever is going to come first or second. Look what I got. Look what I'm wearing. It's July. Got a full chill on. I don't think we're ever going to have summer here again. No will. So I'm going to listen. Wait a minute. Carrying guts on my glasses. The readers. I'm the only one out here. My friends are another 12 miles farther out, I think. Guiding a big group. Now, what do we got? Pretty sure that camera's gonna hear me okay. Seems to have had good good audio before. Where should we start? Way down the list. Get to some of these people that have been waiting forever. All right, here we go. This is red. In honor of my mom is this title. I wrote in on January 25th, 2022, talking about my personal experience. Little did I know at that time, my mother had just passed away in a friend's home from a heart attack. Oh no. I wasn't able to get a hold of her for a day, which isn't unusual when she's staying at a friend's place because usually that friend is home on this day and my mom likes to spend all her time with him. The friend works in Kamloops and had decided not to return to PG, press Prince George, so he was not home in Prince George when it happened. By the following evening, I was getting very concerned. She hadn't been on Facebook answering calls, but I shut, but I shut my instincts down, not wanting to be that daughter or child called they called RCMP for a wellness check and embarrassed the hell out of their parent. By the morning after, I was in panic mode. I called all her friends, no one had heard from her. My best friend immediately went over to where my mom was staying to find my mom had passed from a heart attack. It's been devastating since. I lost my best friend and my mom. We talked every day, and we had so many plans left unfulfilled. My mom had COPD and was on oxygen, but she'd go on any adventure she could with me and her four grandsons and my husband, her family. She'd be dearly missed. That was a sad story. Sorry to hear that. So I want to tell her story 
of her experience with Sasquatch in Bear Lake, BC, just outside of Prince George. Very familiar with that lake. She was living in Bear Lake at 13 years old, early 70s. A bunch of the kids in town would play hide and seek. And while it's seeking, she crossed the railway track and she found a massive set of footprints. All the kids ran to tell the parents. A group of parents looked at the footprint and called RCMP. And after that, after that day, the kids were not to be outside alone or after dark. It was a pretty big deal. My mom never told me until I told her about my experiences with what I believe are Sasquatch. I did, however, have two UFO or UAP experiences with my mom. One time at Crystal Lake, just 10 minutes outside of Bear Lake, when we were camping one summer. Mom had several encounters with UFO at different lakes and with different people who all testified these experiences to me and many others. God bless you, Mom. Thank you, Steve, for the platform. Listening to this channel and a few others have really helped me personally to get through the last few months. My mom passed when I got COVID a week later, and then a fractured tooth that I had to have pulled. I have a lot of pain and suffering, so thank you for the distraction of truth. Thank you. All right, thank you, man. Thank you, Haley. I'm su super, super uh, sad to hear your mom pass like that, and uh, and you're having pain. But it'll subside. Pain always heals, right? You got to stay positive and look on the bright side of everything at all times, no matter what. You got to stay positive. Stay positive, and everything heals. Bear Lake, pretty remote up there. person for this email because it's titled please please give advice so you've watched all your videos and never seen you address this situation first I do not ever want to kill a savage this is hypothetical due to a recent bad encounter I just had on my property if threatened and it turns into a must shoot situation how do we how do we contact who do we contact if we have a body I'm not looking forward to being invaded by the men in black Realistically, who would be the best first phone call to make? Thank you, Brad Hudson, Louisiana. It's like this boat's coming right at me from out in the middle of nowhere. Who'd you contact? Not the government. Not anybody even remotely connected with the government. That's just my thoughts. Who do you contact? What would I do? What would I honestly do? If I had, if I came, let's just say I came across a dead Sasquatch. What would I do? I would definitely videotape it, photograph it, and I would make some video content that would be, uh, that would answer a lot of questions. And prove that what I was looking at was not a hoax by any means. I'd do that. I'm going to probably make a whole pile of uh, copies, put them in a safe place, share them with, and then I just start sharing it with the people, as many people as I could. It's so funny, eh? The whole ocean, the whole ocean, and they got to go right over top of your anchor. Meanwhile, you're like 10 miles from shore. What people are usually doing is they're... Uh, marking your spot on the GPS when they go by them. Whatever. But anyways, that's what I'd do. I would take, uh, if it was safe, I mean, if I killed it, I, don't, I would definitely not be taking any time. I don't think, I'm trying to picture myself. I actually had to get in a confrontation and it ended up with me living in the other thing, dying, person, being, whatever it is I'm having a fight with. It died. And I'm in the middle of nowhere, which I normally am, and I'm a long hike from from safe from the safety of a vehicle to getting home. I would uh, I'm trying to picture what I would really be doing, and I'll bet you I wouldn't even think about my video camera. I'd probably be thinking I'd be, I'd be in complete battle mode, looking all over both directions, up, down, sideways, nonstop, until I got out. Because as we all know, these entities, these beings, whatever you want to call them, they're rarely alone, right? I don't know. This started at first. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not. I would not kill one of these beings. 
just because it looks scary. I wouldn't do it. I don't care what it is. If it's threatening my life, it's it's game on. The fight's great for keeps, right? But yeah. Anyways, for a simple answer, I would make the best the best videos possible, photographs, and I would make numerous copies and I'd spread them all over the planet. That's what I would do. I'd share with everybody. Screw the government. Screw the so-called authorities. They are nothing. They are not smart people and they do not have any honesty or anything positive in, uh, in their minds for us, that's for sure. There's another boat. What the hell? All right, well, let's get another share done. No fish on yet. I would 110% not contact that absolute insane research group either, without a, ch not a chance in hell. I would contact them for anything. Great job on the information for the round table. The hunter slash tracker comment that you mentioned the other day made me think about how the cavalry in years past used native trackers to hunt down criminals or how, pe how people hired guides for hunting. You get the idea. Oh, well, well. There is a video on Bigfoot Odyssey. The video was made about a year ago. There is a gentleman named Mark in the video who talks about a run in while in Florida. He was on a week's getaway with no car or transportation while out in the Florida swamp and staying in a cabin. He had his experience that kind of goes like this. He's sitting by a fire and noticed some eyes shine from the, from the campfire in some nearby bushes. And when he went, went to check it out, he found nothing. This went on for a few days. Then one night, while seated by the campfire, he saw the eye shine again. He went to get up out of his chair and he couldn't. He was being held down by something he could not see. This, in short, is what happened. Oops. This being did some kind of mind speak with him and explained that they, the savvy, are the hunters and we are the prey. The smarter the prey, the greater the hunt. They use every kind of trick they can, mimicking dog calls, kid playing, mimicking family members, almost anything you can think of, and is done for the pleasure of the hunt. The smarter the prey, the greater the excitement of the hunt. The younger ones are in training and used for tracking and hunting. The master or maybe alphas are the ones that can go invisible and vanish anyway. And vanish, and, and vanish away, I'm guessing what you meant to say. I've heard this on and off for a few years now. The guy I mentioned in the video was part of a YouTube channel called On the Trail of Bigfoot. I don't know for certain, but in some crazy way it resonated with me. I at least keep an open mind considering all the other craziness going on. Maybe this is some kind of a predator and we the humans are on the menu or sometimes just to collect trophies, or live the experience of the hunt. I don't know for certain. I know I have seen enough to last me a lifetime. Thanks and keep up the hard work, Anonymous. I just put that in there as a reminder not to say my name. I'm gonna sneeze. You've really come a long way in the last couple of years. That's from working hard at it and not taking any BS from others. There's a very good reason for no name. I'll explain this more down the road very soon. Look at the world around us versus the viruses with lockdowns, financial market meltdowns, corruption, corrupt government, Bigfoot alien crafts, and ball lights, the answer. We can't talk about this. Bullshit. It's governments and corporate powers and they are scared of people knowing. This limits their control over the people. Yeah, it does. Now, uh, I think everybody's probably familiar with that man having that shit eating experience by now. And uh, do I think that was what is known as a classic typical Sasquatch that did that to him? 
from what I've learned recently, especially from my superhero First Nations ladies, no. I don't think that was a Sasquatch. I think that was a, uh, a very nasty entity that was unknowingly invited into his life. That's what I think from what I've been learning. Because again, um, it's like our First Nations elder shared they were never ever taught that the Sasquatch were to be to were vicious or mean or the enemy in any way, but they were taught about how you carry yourself, what you speak about, what you look into, where your energy goes, and what you can attract. And our elders shared that. Okay, as well, David Flies has probably investigated more this topic, the Sasquatch topic, more thoroughly than anybody I know. Um, he has always made it clear to me personally, I think publicly too, is that he has never come across a researcher that was harmed from a Sasquatch, disappeared by a Sasquatch, attacked by a Sasquatch, he never had. So there you go. He has had rocks thrown at him, I know that. And uh, he's had all sorts of weird, weird experiences, but he's never, ever, ever even remotely said that the Sasquatch were our enemies in any way. There you go. There you go. Be careful what you ask for out there while you're looking into unknown things, right? Anyway, I gotta get on my gear for a bit and I'll be back in a bit. Oh man, this tide is ripping. So my anchor is dragging for a little bit there and hooked up again. And then, uh, if you can see my line, the angle of my line is like straight back and I'm in 200 feet of water. It'll slow down, it'll switch around, then I'll bang one. So, while I'm sitting here chilled up, watching my hair grow, let's listen to this. This title. The subject. I'm writing here from Southwest Scotland, and I need to share this information. One night out lamping, hunting with torches, and a torch would be a meaning a flashlight. Myself and a friend were watching a field next to the Galloway Forest when we spotted red eyes in the torch light. We had first thought it was a fox, but while we were both looking through scopes at approximately 200 to 250 yards, this thing stood up and was looking directly at us. We were both looking through scopes at full zoom, which was very clear. We watched for approximately one to two minutes. The standing thing and I could clearly see, although it was dark, that it was standing a lot taller than myself, and I'm six foot three. We knew the cows were far enough away from us and knew enough to know it wasn't an animal that we knew. After the one, after the one to two minutes, the figure started to disappear from the feet up and we were left viewing a torso and head. Then it was gone. The figure was very tall and had hairy legs, but the top half was not as hairy. As we all know, humans' eyes do not reflect torchlight. We never spoke of it until a Bigfoot hunter put a story in the local paper, which was untrue rubbish about this incident that we never spoke about. When I speak of it now, the hair on my neck stands out. We know what we saw, but didn't know what it was. Thanks for your channel, we know now. Thanks to your channel, we know now. Great channel from a fan of Scotland. He's just used my first name, which is Stuart. Thanks. All right. Stuart, uh, you probably know if you're watching all these videos, you're not the only one from Scotland, that's for sure. And, uh, and you're definitely not the only person to have witnessed that happen. Unfortunately, right, you guys? Is it unfortunate that what we have been taught to think of as fairy tale fantasy from childhood up is actually going on for real. And that is the big conflict, right? The big conflict is trying to deprogram ourselves and, uh, and get clued in and and learn more, learn the truth. It's very, very hard to do, right? It's hard to uh, to reprogram our minds or get the re get the programming out. 
Man, there's some, just some bizarre shit going on. That, that some, some great power, and not great by good, I mean great by large, just does not want us to know so much. And I mean, how do you even, how do you even deny that? How do you even argue that? The fact that there was so much going on that, that whoever or whatever is in control doesn't want us to know at all costs. Do not let the humans know what's going on. That sucks, but we're learning, right? We're learning. They can all ram it right up their frickin' pipes. Alright. I gotta check my gear and wait for this tide to change. I don't, know if the, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera or not, but my line is on an angle out there. <laughs> As I'm sitting on the anchor, that means the current is ripping. It's almost like my gear is water skiing behind the boat. Normally, the line is straight down, right? So that shows you just how fast it's going. I got about a, I got a pound and a half of lead hang on there for weight. As soon as this tide slows up, I'll get one. I don't really want to get one right now because this current by myself and on the anchor, it just makes the fish about 10 times heavier to pull up. It's a pain in the ass, so. Here we go, as, the, as we wait for the fish, we carry on sharing people's voices. It's titled Possible Verification. Hey Steve, long time listener, and I agree with 100% of what you say. I live in Wausau, Wisconsin area and own a tiny cabin in the upper in Upper Michigan. Please don't use my name, I work in government. I had an aunt who re recently passed that lived in British Columbia. My story's kind of short, but it may help someone. Just recently, I was up there by my cabin, lots of snow. I don't have anyone to plow for me yet, so if I go up in the winter, I need to bring a snow thrower or a shovel myself. The last trip I got up there at 9.30 local time, Although my land is right on a well-maintained two-lane road, and I have a few spread out neighbors. It really is remote. As the crow flies, I'm about 19 miles... About 19 miles south of Lake Superior. Steve is so beautiful. I love it, and thank God every time I get to this land. I have a trout stream through the east edge of my property. So my brother and I... My brother and I are shoveling snow so we can get the vehicle onto the driveway at 9.30 at night. Stars absolutely dazzling us. Very cold, like negative 10. We stop to catch a breather and a very distinctly and very distinctly hear a branch break to the east of my creek. We listen, nothing else. We go back to shoveling. Half an hour or so later, same thing to the, but the west of us. One break, then nothing. My closest neighbor is about two acres to the west, but this sounded closer. We go back to work and get the vehicle parked on the driveway by 10.15 and start shoveling a path to the north, away from the car towards my camper. We choose to sleep in a camper rather than the cabin, which is, the, which is further to the northwest and takes longer to heat up. I start bringing our stuff into the camper. I thought I heard another branch break. We go inside to start we go inside, start to BS, and I get the heat going for us. I'm drinking beers, trying to relax, and my bro is drinking soda. We're chilling. By 2.30 a.m., I go to relieve myself, and I hear a branch break to the southwest sounding very close. Immediately after that, like a response, I hear a very distinct wood knock, which sounded very close, probably within 50 to 100 yards. I was not frozen with fear, nor did I receive any mind speak or feelings, but it really got my attention. I went outside, told my brother, and he said he was bringing, bringing stuff inside when he heard the same thing, but didn't want to tell me. We slept without fear, and have had no other experiences, and had no other experiences that trip. I hope this may help someone, if you read it. Steve, my wife laughs at me when I share my experiences, but with, but my brothers, who are avid, avid outdoorsmen, too, believe me, thank you. I have a few other encounters to share, 
will end with just this one as it was the most real one to me. Keep up the great, keep up the great work. As a former soldier, I too love freedom and will fight to the death for it. May God continue to bless you and Sarah. All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate that. The UP, I got friends with a hunting cabin in the UP. Uh, they don't have any experiences themselves, but they they do accept the facts from the eyewitness testimonies as truth. Sounds like nobody uh, nobody's angry with you there anyway, right? Hopefully they continue not to be. If you got something that's gonna help us in the future, or you need to get something off your chest, or you know somebody, email it in. We're here, man. This group is big. <laughs> There's a lot of people here. A lot of people, like-minded people, who just are, had it up to the nuts with the bullshit and want the truth about everything. And this is where we're going to get it. We're going to start to get it here anyway, that's for sure. Where's the fish? I don't really like where I'm sitting on the screen right now. I'd rather be a little farther east, but hopefully the tide will swing me over there. I'll get one. I'll get one. Just gotta, just gotta uh, wait it out. Gotta be back in a minute. Alright. What's this thing doing? I bet you I got 300 feet of line out on both rods right now. It's ridiculous. Here we go. Let's get another one, Jared. Before chaos, chaos comes my way. The truth many cannot handle is the title of this one. Hi, Steve. My name is Clayton. Feel free to use my name. I'm 30 years old, and I live in Northern California with my wife and young son. You're a real man's man, Steve, and we need more men like you to model manhood to a generation of wimps and gimps. I'm not an avid outdoorsman, but the mount of my nice eight-point Kentucky whitetail buck looking down on me reminds me of the days when I spent much more time in the woods. My grandfather had almost 700 acres of land for us to explore when we were young, and those memories stand out as some of the best of my life. I don't have access to that land anymore, sadly, but that's a very long story. First of all, before I get into my story, I want to express my anger and disappointment that many young people of my generation are completely disconnected with both nature and objective reality. These days, 2 plus 2 equals 4 seems to be deemed invalid because it supposedly ostracizes and marginalizes people who refuse to accept there is a correct answer to almost anything, especially when the correct answer does not coddle the emotions of the infantile adult children who kick against the immovable wall of truth and stomp their feet when confronted with reality. This disturbing trend is evident in one of the latest developments of insanity, in which an educated fool proclaimed that math is racist. <laughs> what? It seems that human stupidity has no limits, and we prove it every day. It is quite frustrating, isn't it? You know we're lied to. I know we're lied to, but almost everything that truly matters in terms of our temporal and spiritual development. You ask once why people recoil the idea that so many things they believe are lies. Well, I believe it's twofold. This is going to move the camera. I think it's all right. Number one, their pride prevents them from admitting that they could have been deceived. It's both an overestimation of their knowledge bank and an underestimation of the evil motivations of the deceivers. The Bible says they are both deceiving and being deceived. Number two, the mental strength required to reorganize your world view based on new and correct understanding requires intellectual honesty and humility, traits that many do not possess and find detestable. This is self-evidently related to the first point. Many are much more interested in maintaining a feigned superiority over others based on a false bank of knowledge that has no real basis in fact. Christ said to East, sorry, Christ said to esteem others better than yourself. The proverbs also say that anyone who judges a matter before hearing it is a foolish disgrace. 
many will not hear because they cling to their false reality and have no use for hard truth and facts. Still recording? Fortunately, in this community, we don't have to be alone in doing so. I thank you for bringing us together in the spirit of love and acceptance without fear of judgment. This is essential for good, solid information to make its way into the public. Yes, it is. Fear of cancellation is a detriment to truth being shared in good faith. But I'm beyond the fear of cancellation. The Bible tells me in the words of Christ himself that, paraphrase, they hate me. They will hate you too. They hate you because they hated me first. We have to stop caring about what these people think of us because it doesn't matter what we say or how diplomatic we try to be. They hate us because they hate us. They will never change by our capitulation. Sorry. That's what the truckers seem to understand. And God bless their efforts. I don't believe they are in vain on the slightest. Rant over. Okay, man. You still recording? Yep. No fish yet? Nope. Alright. My story isn't all that cl climactic, but I'll tell it anyway. And hopefully someone can benefit just from simply knowing that I hear you, I understand, I can relate. If not by direct experience, and certainly by empathy through love and unfeigned interest in your spiritual and physiological well-being. After all... If we are all concerned for the good of our neighbor, we shouldn't pretend to truthfully be concerned with our own ultimate good. The two are inexorably tied. This occurred many years ago. I believe it was around the age of 16. I was deer hunting on my grandfather's property in West Kentucky. The area was a heavily forested river bottom with lots of CRP. However, trails were cut leading to various small food plots on the property. I was situated in a ground blind on one of these plots, hunting white tails. I'd arrive well before dawn with my dad. He parked a jeep around half a mile from my blind location, part of ways, and I walked alone in the dark until I reached the blind. I remember feeling creeped up by the silence and the dead air in the area. It seemed a switch had been flipped, like the woods volume had been turned way, way down. I know this isn't totally out of the ordinary, ordinary for the pre-dawn, but I thought I would at least hear the familiar rustlings of wildlife around me. Once in my blind, I loaded my 30-30 Winchester rifle and got situated, and made myself comfortable, ready for a long sit. The silence continued. I heard nothing but the faint rustling of leaves, prodded gently by the wind. I remember listening intently, hoping to hear the birds begin singing, as it would soon be dawn. Suddenly, I began hearing the unmistakable sounds of bipedal steps to my rear, which would have been in very thick brush. I froze. I placed my hand on my rifle, ready for a confrontation. I heard a few more footfalls, then nothing. After several seconds of silence, I heard the biped move away from me, and that was it. Soon the birds began chirping, and the day was normal after that. I, not, I cannot confirm that I had a bona fide encounter. It could have been someone trespassing. But what I can say is, is that I know in my deepest parts that these things are real, having never seen one. and that the strange feeling slash silence did precede my experience, which is a bit too coincidental for me. I think truth in many ways, like a gut, I think truth is in many ways like a gut punch. You know when it hits you, and it's very hard to ignore without a concerted and focused effort to do so. Too many display more will to ignore the truth rather than fight for what is right. Thank you, Steve, again for all you do, and thank you, everyone who shares their story here for your willingness to open up without fear. Don't doubt, don't fear. God wins in the end, and truth seekers will have their answers in due time. Can't remember if you said to use your name or not. No? Clayton? Clayton Jarvis. Clayton, you're a brave, kind, generous person. Thanks for your share. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know what to say about what's going on. Why people are so screwed up. It's unfortunate. It's frustrating. Uh, it's kind of like, in a simple form, it's just like me never saying, like, subscribe, and share, because you, you can't, you can't, you can't push a topic like this. You can't push the craving for knowledge on anybody. It's, you either have that craving, you have that concern, that curiosity, or you don't. You 
do. You are intelligent to, enough to know whether or not you will benefit from subscribing to your channel now, on any topic. I'm babbling. Uh, can we fix the people who have been absolutely mind numbed? I kind of doubt it myself. That we can at least find each other, right? We can find all the people out there who are concerned and aware. And it's a start, and then at least you can share the knowledge with the next generations, right? Be honest with them and show them, show them many truths. Hey, I think I'm gonna pull my gear up, which is gonna take forever. And then I am going to put on some fresh bait because the bait that I have out was actually out the last time I was fishing, and then I refroze it. And halibut like more of a fresh bait. So, time to give the arms a workout. And I will be back. Now here comes a plane. <laughs> it's probably flying around looking for whales, I'm guessing. Or a whale watching business. I actually went and checked out a whale carcass yesterday. I'm sure I'll share one of these videos. Pretty bizarre on the beach, skeleton. As I wait for the tide to slow up, let's read another one. Unreal Sabe in New Jersey. Hey Steve, first off, thank you for letting us tell our encounters through you. My encounter's not much, but it changed my life and definitely when and how I go into the woods. I live in South New Jersey and believe it, and believe it or not, there are a lot of woods slash nature preserves that famous pine barrens are not too far from here. Well, I live in Vineland, it's either Vinland or Vineland, and then there's a nature reserve near my house. We've been hiking through for 18 years or so. I bring my dogs up there to run them. Well, it was last March, 2011. Oops, sorry, 2021. I took my new puppy over there. Her name is Chloe. She'll peck up anything to chase, stick, ball, rock, trees, five times her size. She's amazing and never stops, full of energy. Well, there are, well, they are, sorry. Well, there are like little roads, sort of like the logging roads. We have crisscrossing a lot of new areas. And there are these massive puddles, almost like ponds, all over them. Four wheel drive Jeep tracks crawling through. They have a huge amount of bullfrogs living in them, and they're loud croakers. I can hear them a long way out and all the time. There's no reason why I'm, there is a reason why I'm referencing the noisy frog infested ponds. The only time they stop croaking is when we are real close, or Chloe happens to tramp through the puddles chasing her sticks. I left my house with my camera all new batteries and my iPhone, check the SD card, etc. I started filming Chloe chasing the sticks and some other odd looking things like these blobs up in the pine trees, almost like big and little X's depending on which way you're looking at the trees. I started getting closer to a structure and my battery warning indicator came on on my camera. On my camera, I just put in a new set of batteries. Then I noticed it got really quiet and all I heard was Chloe yipping and yapping at the logs she was dragging around. So we headed back to the truck to look for new batteries. I started filming with my phone. Nothing much, just me walking Chloe running. Then I got to my truck, hit the unlock tab. I came out of the, I came out of the side trail and on the main dirt road when I looked to my right and saw a figure, about six and a half to seven feet tall, standing between two trees. It was rocking side to side, then lurched forward a bit as if it was ready to run my way. It was blacker than black. And that was what drew my attention that way. All I could think about was getting Chloe in the truck. If she ran that way, this feeling, if she ran that way, this being would rip her apart. I had my phone in my right hand, but something in my head told me, I better not film in that direction or your dog is gone. So I panicked, dropped my camera and phone on the floor of my truck. I chased Chloe down, got her in the truck and sped out of there. That's creepy. My adrenaline was kicked in so badly I was shaking and didn't know what the hell I saw. It was just odd. My batteries went dead when I was getting close to 
Sorry. It is odd. My batteries went dead when I was getting close to filming certain areas. Almost. Like I was getting too close to something it didn't want me to see. It all happened so fast. It's one of those things where I wished I would have turned the phone to the right just a little bit, but I didn't want to lose my dog. I still can't believe it happened, especially here in South Jersey. It did, and I'm 100% certain it was a Sabe, Sasquatch, or it could have been a dog man. I was just a little too... I was just a little too far for exact details of the face. It was not a human. Why would someone be wearing a full black... full body black stuffed snowmobile suit with a foot up on a 60 degree day? The rocking back and forth is what got me like it was ready to pounce on us. Sorry, it was more interesting, but it was real. I know what I saw. I went back a couple weeks later with my dog to look for tracks. There is rain down the road is gravel. We're just rocking side to side. And that's it. Thank you again. I've told one person, I think he thinks I'm nuts. I had a little chuckle, but most people think it's a joke. Sad. Feel free to say my name. Truth, logic, and common sense will prevail. Keep the faith, villagers. I also subscribe to Missing 411 and Scott Carper, and they both have great information. Thank you. Lee Herring, Vinland, Vineland, New Jersey. There's another one. Sorry, I read it a little off. Like I said, when I hear things, it takes my attention almost completely away from reading. Or vice versa, sometimes when I read it, it takes my attention away from hearing things. New Jersey. New Jersey's not a brand new place to have these experience at. experiences at, that's for sure. The Pine Barrens, we've had that written in numerous times. I've, I've read, I can recall reading the Pine Barrens lots, lots of times. Now, the tide's slowing up. It's gonna change. This is gonna be Action Jackson, so probably going to use the harpoon so instead of me wrestling with a fishing rod by myself and trying to get this ready while there's a fish yanking on it I'll get this ready right now and how this works is you get a halibut up the top and uh, I'll tie this rope onto the boat sometimes usually well if I'm by myself I will and then uh, what I did was I drilled a hole for this wooden handle and uh, cinched up the slack. It's got a harpoon head on the end of it, so you stab this through the fish, pull it away, the tip comes off, and it goes on a T on the other side of its body. And then it's all in the rope and not the fishing rod, and then you got them, right? So, I'm ready for battle. Be back shortly. tree right there. And then he's gonna pluck that baby in the bottom next. Which is a sandwich from. So this is the interesting. 